of the session. <laughs> <laughs> you can use your knees, so you read out on mine. <laughs> okay. We try to basically only pictures in one word, so I assume that uh, you will be able to follow without a projector. Um, real options is about dealing with uncertainty, about being able to explore the unknown, and increasing your awareness of choices you can make. Um, I've been working with real options for a long time, and what I only discovered when I started to work with Steve uh, introduced me to this interesting topic of trust. Um, I started to notice that actually uh, real options are a good way to remove uh, something that I don't like from organizations. Um, one important thing, uh, it's about options being non-obligations. So this is fractal, right? Using real options is optional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? You're entirely free to uh, feel obliged to do something, and you might treat it as an option. Our language, our organizations are full of coercive behavior, full of coercive um, structures and behaviors and habits. And I think <coughs> If we want organizations to grow, if we want to unleash uh, human potential, if we want to uh, have personal growth and organizational growth, we need to get rid of, uh, oh, we need to deal with yeah. uncertainty. It's good to not look at the slides when you talk. Um, <clears throat> because growth is... Uh, an emergent thing, right? So we don't know where something will grow. And we have this uh, need for safety, which is the, uh, which creates the existential afraidness, scaredness of the future. So uh, how can we make dealing with uncertainty easier for us, less coercive, less uh, stressful? I think the reason for many of our habits, of our behaviors, of our organizations to be so coercive is that we treat a lot of things as commitments that we don't actually need to treat as commitments. Mm -hmm. For instance, when I buy a ticket to a concert, most people who have bought a ticket feel obliged to go, but you don't actually need to, you don't have to. Right? It's an option. It's an option for an enjoyable evening, and if you have another option to make the evening more enjoyable, you might not decide to execute your option. You might decide not to go, right? So if we change how we look at all of the things in our environment that we think about as commitments now, and start treating them as options, um, then dealing with uncertainty becomes easier, because it changes our awareness of our surroundings. What are real options? Options have value, right? It has a value for me to have this nice evening, <clears throat> and I pay a price for the ticket to the concert. That's the first real options principle. Options expire, right? The ticket is valid on a certain evening, on a certain date. If I'm not in the right city at the time, if I don't start my journey there early enough, if I'm not at the door before it closes, my option to have this specific enjoyable evening expires. And based on these two things we keep in mind, there's the third and most important principle, never commit early unless you know why, right? If I have a more enjoyable option for the evening, I have a reason not to go to the concert. If I don't, and if I still find it very, very enjoyable to go to the concert, I will go. So, what does that give us? Real options is a way to understand the last responsible moment, 
And a long time, I took it as two sides of one coin, and that limited my understanding. So it is important to understand the last responsible moment. So if you still have a problem uh, understanding the lean concept of designing as late as possible, this helps. And if you want to take the next step, <coughs> work on this word. Work on what I just said before, treating commitments as options. Right? There's two things we have to do in life, maybe three. We need to breathe, we need to die, and some of us need to pay tax. <laughs> right? Everything else is optional. And as soon as we start to change our thinking in that way, life becomes much easier and serendipity has a chance to enter the stage. So, <clears throat> this is no dogma. As I said in the beginning, op real options is an optional concept, right? So don't be dogmatic about it. Your mind and your heart will need a bit of time to change. And uh, just use it to step by step, bit by bit, increase your awareness of your options. As options means having a choice. And according to a recent book I read by Seth Godin, that is the meaning of being rich today. Being aware of and having a choice, right? So this actually can make you rich, although it's not about money, I love this. <laughs> These two guys, dear friends of mine, have introduced the real options concept to the Lean and Agile community. They have written a book, actually they've written and drawn a graphic novel on real options, it's called Commitment. Mike and I are working on the German translation. We hope to finish it very soon because we committed to finishing it on February 20th, but unfortunately it's not really in the future yet. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they see this video and forgive us. <laughs> so would you... <laughs> Do you take comments or...? Later. Oh, later. We now need to stress you to feel uncertainty. <laughs> uh, we should we should mention you mentioned the uh, uh, becoming rich with real options, and you mentioned the idea that options have value and options expire, which of course. Oh, he's a banker. <laughs> Please which, listen. <laughs> of course, remind me of my unhappy days working for a Swiss bank. No, some of those days were happy. Um, in the options trading area, or doing software for options trading, because the concept of options come, which I never really understood, don't tell anyone at the bank that, that um, uh, in the concept of financial options, uh, you, you buy the option to, you pay for the option to either buy or sell an underlying principle at a, a later time. And so uh, you pay something for that option, and then uh, at the point of expiry, depending on some technical things, uh, you either buy or sell, and then that option pays off or if you let it expire, it doesn't pay off. You can get into a lot of financial theory, you can get into a lot of calculations. Yeah. A lot of these, most of these calculations have to do with making guesses. And you can look up real options on Wikipedia and they'll talk about a financial variant of real options where you try to assign numerical values to every guess you're making. You're trying to forecast the future based on uh, making numerical guesses. I'm bad with math and I'm also not sure that it really helps to assign numbers to these guesses in the future. Uh, instead, just the concept we are wanting to borrow is the concept of options of value, options expire, and um, that actually keeping the options open and exercising them uh, when you lie. Yeah. Okay. What's next? Yes, that's what I was just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> you need to work, that's for sure. Yes. Um, what I'd like you to do is form a small group, maybe five people, three to five people.